Now, the archetype of the warrior means that uh, when such archetype is very dominant in a person or in a society or in a collective group, uh, the kind of flavor, the kind of behavior that the archetype of the warrior entails, uh, it's very much uh, directed towards competition, towards uh, force, strength, uh, aggressiveness, uh, drive, all the ingredients that you might think about when you think about a warrior, someone going in battle, someone willing to fight and even to die in battle for whatever reason he's fighting for. So the archetype of the warrior very much still nowadays uh, is the dominant archetype even in most corporations where the structure is still command and control type of uh, management style, right? So uh, typically the warrior is the one that receives orders, delivers, fights until he either wins the war or just die fighting. So this is somehow in a very short way what the archetype of uh, the warrior entails. Does it make sense? Uh, of course, the, the way I just portrayed the archetype of the warrior, I didn't mean to imply that there are only negative aspects in the warrior's behavior, because also the element of discipline um, or the element of drive, of commitment, these are all uh, psychological and uh, behavioral aspects that are somehow part of the warrior domain. So any archetype, as they say in Jungian words, uh, there is the positive side of the archetype and the shadow side of the archetype. So there are the pros and cons. But the basic underlying features of the warrior is the fight. We need, there is something to be conquered and I'm willing to do it no matter what. Now, the typical management style that has been uh, so predominant, so dominant in the past few hundred years and management style, of course, I'm referring in the past 100, 150 years since the, since the model of corporation kind of uh, boomed, it's still very much warrior-like. But as time changes, uh, we are witnessing the emergence of a new leadership style, which is the one uh, closer to the features, closer to the teachings or closer to the feelings of the magician. Now, when we talk about the archetype of the magician, we are talking about an archetype that allows, basically the, the domain of the magician is a domain of possibilities, which is a, a recurring word in our conversation. So the more we are able to evoke or to invoke or to nurture or to foster the ideas of possibilities, that's the typical trait of a magician thinking. The more we think that there is more than meets the eye, the reality is wider than we assume, reality, the reality is wider than our assumption, the more we are thinking like a magician. So we conceive the idea that even if we didn't find uh, a new solution yet, even if we didn't find the innovative solution or the creative breakthrough, we can assume that somewhere is to be found, that we didn't find it yet. So that's the typical trait of the magician. The magician is the one that conceives larger solutions, all-encompassing, uh, wider ideas that somehow are latent, somehow are existent. We still didn't find the right mix of the ingredients in order to have this new idea uh, or the seemingly impossible emerge. So that's the find, one of the most significant traits of uh, what a, how a magician thinks, and that's the kind of flavor that in the past few years, it's kind of a, an emerging trend globally. That's the kind of uh, leadership style which is taking shape, is being formalized, uh, and is kind of taking momentum because uh, the warrior-like leadership is kind of fading away just because the condition of our global gains uh, are such that the, lead, the magician leadership is the, let's say, it's the more evolved quality of uh, leadership style that we can conceive nowadays.